Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jose Nieves, I'm the Chairman of the Commission. I'm um, going to be the order today to give a case of the two of the PM. We go to 201 PM. Um, that's why I called this meeting to discuss um, development in the legislative process and also uh, some of the certification. In order to discuss those matters, I believe we need to go into executive session. So I'm asking for a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Executive Law 9419. Before you do that, I have something I'd like to say. If I may. Uh oh. Okay, wait, so I'll do with other business but we'll probably have uh, opportunity not only for yourself but also the commission to make up the Um well it it deals with the disaster that I think is the proposed legislation to replace JCO and before members or the public have to make decisions about it, I thought I would uh, since nobody ever asked us for our opinion beforehand, I thought I'd say a few things so that at least the members of the legislature who are voting on this would know that they've been suckered by the um, proposal that the governor has here. I appreciate that, Commissioner James. Uh, I would just ask that you hold your comments to another bit and uh, something. Okay, that's going to be after the executive session. That is correct. Immediately following the second session. Well, I'll, I'll leave it to the other members. My preference would be to get it out front right now. But, um, you know, you're the chair, and so I'll leave it to the other commissioners. If they'd like to hear what I have to say about the proposed legislation now, I'll say it. If they want me to wait until two hours from now and hope there's someone still listening who hasn't voted on it, that's fine too. I'd like to hear from uh, Judge Yates. Before we go into executive session, he seems to have something that is of vital importance to what we're going to discuss in the executive session. So let's get it all out. Any other commissioners? Yes, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Brown. Yeah, I, I would like to hear from my current and former colleague, Judge Yates, Jim Yates. Um, I'm going to let him speak first, and I'll only say that I think the legislature is correct in making changes. Um, there are certain parts of the <coughs> JCO enabling statute that I've always felt um, should be changed uh, as to how far they've gone. Uh, I'll let uh, Judge Hayes speak to that and um, just speak after. Chair. Uh, All right. Yes. I too would like to hear Judge Hayes. I don't. I don't believe there's anyone who is more in tune with how the legislative process works on this commission than Judge Yates, and he has experience and understanding of this of this issue well beyond probably most of us. So thank you. All right. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna amend the agenda to move the new one the for the executive session. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I don't believe that the final bill is in print yet, uh, but um, I'll be frank, I've had conversations with people um, so that um, as members are being briefed and as reporters are being briefed, uh, I've also learned something about uh, the proposal. For people who have criticized Jacob over the years, one of the biggest criticisms has always been that we seem to fail to take action against uh, especially executive officials and legislative officials too, but, the, but everyone, the bulk of the complaints are against executive officials. Um, and um, the special voting requirement was always a problem. Um, I'm glad to see that there's a proposal to eliminate the special voting requirement, and that doesn't bother me at all. Simple majority should be able to vote. Uh, that part doesn't bother me. But the real tension throughout the year has been the following. There's always been a criticism staff came from the 
the executive agency for the Attorney General's office, especially when Governor Cuomo previously had been the Attorney General. There had always been a fight about how much of the staff were just um, revolving door through the um, executive chamber. Um, over the years, staff had taken on to itself the ability to um, approve actions by the governor um, without even informing, let alone advising or getting consent from the commissioner. That's been a part of public discussion. I'm not going to say anything during the public session that's not public already. Um, and as you know, there were a number of motions that we made over the last two years to try and correct that. Um, the approval for the Cuomo book is a classic example. Uh, everybody knows that, that was approved by a staff member on a, on a rush basis uh, between meetings and over the objection of several mission members who had to see more detail and never got it. Never got the detail, it was just approved. That, that approval is the subject of ongoing inquiries and so I'm not going to talk about that in particular. But there had always been a problem, a wrestling between how much power staff had and how much power the commissioners had, how many decisions staff made and without even giving information to the commissioners, let alone getting a vote. We tried to correct that recently. We've amended some of our regulations. And to some extent, we recently did that. It turns out, and I don't want to get too personal, but one of the staff people who's been here for, for a while has now become the lead negotiator for Governor Coco Coco on this proposal. So while there's an investigation going on about whether staff has usurped to itself too much power, and while there's complaints by us that staff has too much power, the the the, the legislation that Governor Hochul grew a recently hired appointee who came from the staff here gives more power to the staff. Now I know that the, the general public who's not familiar with all of this has focused on another issue and that is are we direct appointees or are we screened or do we get appointed by some outside body? That part's fine. I don't care. Whatever they come up with is fine. Uh, that's not my issue. But what's amazing about this draft is it takes power from the commissioners, these newly screened commissioners, and arrogates it to the staff. And they'll meet quarterly instead of every month, the commission. So at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter who you put in. You could put in a pope, a president, and a premier as your commissioners. It doesn't really matter because the staff's going to be making the decision. Now, to, on top of that, to make matters worse, there are provisions, and I've, I've worked on legislation for 40 years, so I can tell you that it means something that's new to me. It, it, believe me, it's new. Um, there are provisions in there that say that the current staff don't have to apply, don't have to meet qualifications, um, and they will be, they'll continue in their current positions and status. I've never seen anything like that. When a new commission comes in, they should be able to hire whatever staff they want. But now to say that the staff, I mean, the language, I can, I won't read it to you, but it says basically that without qualification and without submission submitting um, to an application process, they stay on in their current status. They did something else that we've never done. We fought for years and said that staff um, um, well, we recently had a res resolution that said that staff could not approve the governor's application. They write into this statute, yeah, now staff can give informal opinions. There's never been anything about informal opinions in the statute before. They created that out of all thought. Uh, and given that, given these informal opinions, the same power and effect as if the commission had voted on it. The, uh, so at, at the end of the day, my, my quarrel is not with who appoints or how commissioners get appointed. Although I do think it's interesting when I look at the, uh, 
uh, when I look at the appointment process they have in here that they put in place, um, I commend the recent gubernatorial appointment. I think, and I actually I commend the ones who stayed on. Uh, Commissioner Shapiro, Commissioner Fisher, I think they perform at the highest level. We may have agreed or disagreed about things, but they have been specific. The new commissioners I've been happy with, because they've taken on the job in, in earnest, and they have tried to break away from the old times with the old administration. But this legislative proposal now says that you're disqualified from being a commissioner if you were previously a commissioner uh, and appointed by the governor. It doesn't mind that the legislative appointees stay on, but it doesn't let the gubernatorial appointees stay on. I don't know why. I don't know why they're discriminated against. There's nothing wrong about them from my point of view. Um, the, and usually, when you do legislation like this, and I know because I've worked on it, uh, you say something about pending investigations. We have a ton of very important pending investigations right now. And I've got to say thank you to the new, I hate to use the word cohort because it's been abused, but the new group of appointees who are great uh, has taken on seriously, and we're going to be talking about serious investigations that we've never taken on before. Uh, and, and we can't talk about them now, or we can, I don't know, that's an open question, but we don't talk about investigations. But this legislation, as opposed to typical legislation, it, it gives it an open end. It, it doesn't say anything about continuing. It just says that the um, new commission can promulgate re regulations regarding pending investigations. Well, that's nice. That means there's no requirement that they will honor or continue any of the hard work that we've been doing behind the scenes right now to try and develop and get something done. Um, when all is said and done, I think this is a hoax. Uh, the members will, you know, people complain about how the members are going to be appointed. I say it doesn't matter how they're appointed because they're not going to have any power. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Yates. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Lamont, go ahead. Again with a question. Has our staff reviewed the proposal? No, we haven't seen it or been provided a copy by anyone. Thank you. Uh, it, uh, if I may continue, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, General Kelly. Uh, may I? Continue, Mr. Chairman. My understanding is, and I will, uh, of course, uh, stand corrected if I am misstating the circumstance. My understanding is that this proposal that's going to be voted upon probably tonight or early tomorrow morning does not address in any respect the Office of Inspector General. This is a fundamental dereliction on the part of the governor and the legislature if such a so-called reform is enacted without addressing the abuses that occurred during the Cuomo administration with respect to the Office of Inspector General, in which the office was weaponized to attack political opponents and used to cover up wrongdoing by members of the administration and their fellow travelers. I cannot fathom characterizing any proposal as an enhancement or reform without addressing this fundamental subversion that's occurred of ethics enforcement and administration of the state. I hope that the legislature will reconsider uh, this element of ethics reform in the state. And I hope I'm wrong in characterizing the bill as excluding addressing the Office of Inspector General. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, if I may briefly. Uh, let, let me just say, uh, on behalf of the staff, I've never seen a more diligent, more devoted, more dedicated, smarter, 
more hardworking group of people dedicated to fulfilling their statutory mission. Uh, I, I don't want to belabor this point, and I've, I've said that before, uh, and, and, and maybe there's another forum where we can discuss this. We have not seen the legislation uh, to which Judge Yates has referred. Uh, we're hoping we'll have an opportunity to see it, although the expectation is uh, that won't happen until it has been uh, acted upon by the legislature. Uh, but I do think it's important uh, to acknowledge the hard, diligent, and dedicated work uh, that I have seen, uh, not quite a year yet, uh, about a month short of that, uh, in my tenure at this commission. Uh, and I would say that the volume of work that has been done has been impressive. Uh, and I, I think staff deserves an enormous amount of credit for the work that they have done under difficult circumstances, uh, often without appreciation, and often in the face of unwarranted criticism. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to delay the progress of the meeting. Mr. Chair, can I speak, please? Go ahead, Commissioner Yates. I mean, Commissioner Fisher, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to echo the remarks that Judge Berlin just made. Uh, I'm in my fourth year on the commission, and I found the staff to be diligent, very communicative. Uh, with respect to the outside activity request from the governor, from the day after staff was contacted, all of the commissioners that were then serving, including myself, were looped into that conversation, and as Judge Dean said, a couple of uh, commissioners um, asked questions. Uh, they didn't object. There were no objections. I reviewed the email. Um, there was no one that said, don't you dare vote. You know, there's a lot of uh, money going into quarterbacking, and I'm sure in the course of the investigation that will be borne out, and I just feel it's absolutely wrong to be throwing the staff under the bus at this point in time. And if we want to have continuity of the investigations that are underway, we have to have continuity of the staff. We can't do what was done when Jay Cope was formed and start from scratch. My understanding is that that set them back by months and months. And with these investigations ongoing, whether we're going to be voting on them or our successors doesn't really matter, we need the staff, the investigators, who've been doing an excellent job to continue their their fine work and whoever votes on it is up to the legislature but I think it's totally appropriate whether to get transfer of function from the current um, agency to the next one. Now respectfully the last two speakers threw out red herrings that had nothing to do with what I said. I, the staff could be the best staff in the world. The issue isn't whether they're good staff. The issue of is who makes the decision, the commission or the staff, and moving more power to the staff and away from the commissioners makes the idea of an independent commission a joke. And that's what the governor is coming to. With regard to what Bill Fisher just spoke about, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about who knew or who didn't know on the formal book approval. I'm talking about a very simple matter. The statute never, ever, ever said that staff could approve a governor's request, and that would be binding. But now, for the very first time, Governor Hochul has put forward a bill that says that. And that's a monumental change in legislation. Once again, no red herrings. I'm not talking about whether staff acted appropriately or they're good. I'm talking about a bill that does awful things in terms of empowerment of staff over a commission. Let me, let me just say this. Uh, inside the appointment chair of the commission, we can say without reservation that the staff has been happy um, Their professionalism has been um, beyond approach. Their ability to, to communicate what's going on to myself and the other commissioners has been um, without any, in my, my experience, without any concern. Um, but I share Commissioner Yang about this legislative process and the so-called reform that changed the very dynamic and future of the commission that uh, attempts to basically um, create a commission of figureheads that have lived 
little snow power, and you know that is not something that you can just make it so public. It's not something that uh, all states have with regards to ethics and ethics code school. Um, and I, I truly believe that you know the, the whatever you know ideas are being explored in the state process is made by judicial change are very good. That being said, my experience with the staff and the significance of that is that they've been absolutely professional in committed uh, public service to, to the commissioners of the state uh, Are there any other commissioners? I don't, know if you can, I don't know if you can see me, Go Chair. Commissioner Braun. Okay, okay. Commissioner Braun, go ahead. I've been on the commission for about a year. Um, the only things that I've heard about the proposed changes of what I've read and heard through the media, I haven't spoken to anybody uh, in the legislature about it. Uh, I've said this before, I was appointed by the Speaker of the State Assembly. I don't believe I ever met him or anybody from his staff before my appointment. I did speak to a staff member during the appointment process. Um, I, I was never told in any way whatsoever of anything I should or should not do. Um, both at that point or, or since and to this day, um, there are things that have concerned me with the with the enabling statute of how this commission was set up that I've seen over the course of the little over a year that I've been on the commission. One was touched upon already, the, the super voting um, part of the statute which enabled um, certain commissions to prevent a vote from carrying even where there was a majority vote. Um, that's something that's disturbing from the beginning. I'm not casting this person on any individual commissioners. I don't know what's been in the mind of any individual commissioners. I've got along with all the commissioners um, well. Um, but that's been a concern of mine. And uh, I have to say that I have seen a difference uh, without going into any details because it's confidential. The difference in the way some of the newer commissioners <laughs> being be old hat at this point of over a year uh, have seemingly acted. Um, in relation to some of the left. And I also include the, the commissioners in the past um, who uh, have shown their independence, just as I've always been independent, and I've made my decision based only on the merits. Um, <coughs> I did have a concern in knowing that there was a likelihood that Jacob would be, um, would be disbanded, a new commission would be established. I did have two particular concerns, both of which have been touched on, uh, one in the first one in different ways, and that relates to the staff. Um, in my experiences in working with the staff, uh, they've always been extremely professional and have done a very good job in what they've done. Uh, I was concerned for them of <coughs> what would happen to their position. Um, and the other concern which was touched on is the pending investigation. You know, the public doesn't know what's been going on, but there are many serious pending investigations that uh, I would hope aren't going to fall by the wayside just because of the commission established. And along with Judge H, I have a concern um, about, well, two. One that relates to how the new commissions would be appointed, and second would be what what powers they have, if they, what power they should say that it would have a snow meeting once, uh, rather four times per year. Um, the, the staff um, runs the commission day to day, but the commissioners, under the current statute, we are the commission. We appoint the executive director, we appoint the staff, the executive director obviously has a big hand in that. Um, and if the staff is going to be doing their job, you know, I think from past uh, observation quite um, quite well and quite comprehensively and confidently, uh, if they're going to be doing their job day to day during their work week um, for the year, and we, and we whoever 
the commission star. There are only been four times a year, and that's what that's what said they were going to be running the commission. And the example of the book deal, um, the, 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 there were some problems in the process, but I'm not going to talk about that. We've already been through that. Um, but that was approved, and I'm not denigrating the staff member who approved it. Um, I wasn't on the commission. I have no knowledge of what transpired uh, other than what I've heard. Um, so I'm not in any way criticizing him, but that's an example of the staff made a critically important decision in between commission meetings. The commissioners of the commission now and presumably in the future, though I haven't seen the bill, and the commissioner should be making the decision. In terms of the appointment process, um, I don't denigrate any legislators and, and, or, or, you know, at, at, uh, or the executive branch in terms of their specific appointments, but I have a problem with the process and, and it, to have a truly independent ethics commission, which is what the public deserves, is to have commissions who are not uh, in any way beholden either through conversations or, or directions, uh, which I've had none, as I said, but I don't know if any of you have had it anything beyond. Um, and so there should be a truly independent process. Could be that the that the commissions are appointed <laughs> by independent um, groups outside of government. It could be the commissions would be elected. Um, but that's for the legislature to decide. But I think the current the current process <laughs> and the apparent process that's going to come to pass um, if this bill is, is uh, voted upon favorably and the government signs it, I think has, has those problems. Um, let me just see if there's anything else I want to say. Um, nope. I've covered it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Um, the first I've heard of any go ahead, go ahead. the first I've heard of any details was what Commissioner Yates just set forth for us. Um, and I agree with everything that he said, but I'd like to add also I think two nuances given my particular um, position. First, my appointment, I assure everyone was a totally independent appointment. I have no connection other than uh, knowing the governor. I have no political connection whatsoever with her. And um, I am a little upset that to any extent there is an innuendo that I'm anything less than independent if I am not permitted to serve by virtue of having been appointed by the governor. Um, I am concerned that uh, what that communication might might mean. Um, my other concern, as a relatively new commissioner, is that it I suffered from the lack of history when I came on the commission of an awful lot of investigation and not yet investigations that were pending. And it took me a lot of work in order to uh, get to the point where I felt comfortable even voting on a number of things that were coming before the commission. Um, I, I fear that given what we have pending at this current time, uh, replacing us with almost an entirely new commission with very little carryover uh, will make it even more difficult for whatever commission is taking our place. And will, I think, as, as a matter of course, put more uh, power in the hands of the staff because we, the commission will be unknowing. Um, and so I, I would like to add those concerns to the ones that Commissioner Yates has already raised. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Grossman. Commissioner DePero, go ahead. 
So I want to thank Commissioner Yates for um, giving us an update on the pending legislation. Um, my concern is that we're all pontificating about our position on the inflation and who we think right, what we thought was wrong, and what's been wrong in the past. But we're dealing in a quite situation. We've got legislation that may be passed in the next 12 to 24 hours that will have long-term ramifications, not just on us individually, um, for us collectively, but on the work that we've done, the work that needs to be done to maintain um, the, the law as it stands in the executive office. We've got pending investigations that we've put a great amount of time on. None of us, I don't think, are debating the, the um, level of staff competency or receptiveness to our questions or our needs, or we wouldn't be where we are with these um, investigations. It's incumbent upon us to continue as a state to be able to take the work that we've done so far and continue it. So my point is we could talk for the next two hours and not even get into executive session just about what we think should be done, what we think should have been done, what could be done. I think somehow we come together to get to the governor and get to the assembly speaker and Senate leader of the Senate and tell them that we've never been asked individually or collectively what needs to be done what would be best practices for J. Cole, putting aside our own personal preferences and just talking to experienced commissioners who have gone through the, the, the discontent of the public with what we're doing, much of it based on misinformation and not that. It's a hardworking staff, it's hardworking commission members, and somehow we need to get our voice out there and hope to stop this from going through, at least put a delay on it so that we could have some input and that it isn't a big for the legislature in a couple months. Thank you, Commissioner Carroll. Anyone else? Oh, no, just to wrap, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. First of all, I agree a 1,000% with what Commissioner Shapiro just said. Um, you know, this commission gets criticized and for a lot of different things. And I'm never quite sure exactly what, because if you you have about 10 new members, all of whom are terrific and hardworking, it's a different commission from the one that you had even three years ago or so. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of good work that's been done, but it's below the surface. So we take criticism with people not even knowing exactly what they're criticizing or why they're criticizing it. And, and laying blame for things that may have been done years ago before just as most of the commissioners were even on the commission. So I really do agree that the people who are on the commission right now have something valuable to say to the legislators. Uh, I, I don't care if we stay on or not. I don't speak for anyone else. I don't care. You know, look, for uh, $300 a month, I don't do it. And, and, and being banned from doing any other work, just about. I, I don't do this work or the um, profit, you do this work out of love um, and, and care. And if you don't, you know, if they want some new people, that's fine, I don't care. Um, but I agree with what Commissioner Zapiro said. And then the last little bit of information I want to throw in is I'm, I'm looking at language right now just as we're speaking, and I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, talking about staff empowerment, um, instead of the commission hiring any of the staff, it's, it's the executive director has given the power to do all the hiring of staff, including to create an audit and, and, and advise and guidance committee out of his own staff that will give the advice and guidance when the governor asks to be able to do something. If the governor wants to know whether or not her husband um, can lobby on a particular issue or whether or not she can get involved in the Buffalo Bills deal or, a, or some gambling deal or something, and she goes for advice, uh, to the commission, who will she go to? She'll go to an executive director who used to work in the, in, or, or she'll go to staff or council who used to work in the executive side without the commissioners even knowing about it. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm just not there. Okay, so hearing no other comments, I would ask for a motion to go into executive. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Commissioner.
on an item for new and other business, if I may. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A week ago today, Governor Cuomo sued the commission to block further action by the commission against him. The same day, one of his attorneys, Rita Glavin, submitted a letter to the Inspector General. In the letter, the governor's attorney asserted that with respect to the resolutions that were deliberated upon and voted with respect to revoking the Martin Levine approval of him, and the subsequent resolutions deliberated upon and voted upon by the commission with respect to disgorgement were tainted because one or more commissioners, particularly me, relied upon and were informed of confidential information and evidence induced in a parallel enforcement act which Governor Cuomo was also put into the public domain last Friday. This assertion is a complete fabrication, a phantasmagorical fabrication at that. It's an outright lie that's been perpetrated by Governor Cuomo's term. Now, I'd like to know, Mr. Chairman, if you or the executive director have contemplated a response to this submission made by Governor Cuomo's attorney to the Inspector General. That might be something we discuss in the executive session. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Having no, hearing no other commissioner comments, can we uh, have a motion to go into the executive session? Motion made by Commissioner Hendrick. Seconded by Fisher. Second by Fisher. All in favor, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous, Mr. Chair. We are back in public session. Good afternoon, let's have the readout. Sure. Uh, in executive session, the commission uh, discussed litigation and other legal matters, including authorizing the engagement of outside counsel uh, in the matter of uh, litigation brought by former Governor Cuomo uh, related to the commission's ongoing enforcement proceeding. Uh, the commission discussed uh, ongoing investigative matters, and then the commission discussed certain personnel matters. Unanimous. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Have a good weekend. Everybody be well.